because that's uh, that's uh, that crypto is something which is not going anywhere it's like an elephant in the room you either learn to live with it dance with it because you can't keep it out only if you do so might as well sit back enjoy and enjoy the tip right but more important than crypto and then, and that this is something very important more important than crypto is the underlying technology and that is blockchain so today i'm going to talk to you about blockchain crypto both the things and much more and i'm going to explain to you why as students as teachers as people they are walking into the next few years next 25 years we have to understand tokenomics crypto blockchain because without that there's a lot of huge part in our lives which we'll be missing out so let me first show you why. Can anybody ask me, ah, crypto, blockchain, are there any jobs, are we, are we, so on and so forth. I'm going to show you a little video first. I'll start off with the video, and then I'll show you a small presentation. The video is all about blockchain headlines which I've collected over the last six, eight months. So sit back, relax. I'm, I'll switch off my video and put on the real video which you need to see, all right? Here we go. And I'm sharing my screen, and here we go with this wonderful video, which I love anyways. It's called Blockchain Headlines. Let's have a look at the last six to eight months headlines. Here we go. the headlines and headlines don't lie these are actual headlines from newspapers magazines portals which we all read and respect they all point to one direction there this is a space which is booming it's not just growing it's booming and when we talk about crypto and blockchain why should it not be in colleges let me show you my presentation on why i feel we should all know at least a little bit if not much more and here's my presentation for that. So crypto and blockchain for schools and colleges. I put a question mark here because, again, today also somebody asked me, are you going to talk about crypto for colleges and schools? Are you going to make them gamble? Are you going to make them trade on the exchange? Look at the market. It's falling. And for God's sake, everything is falling. Doesn't matter. That's, just, that's a dip in the, always happens. All right. Crypto and blockchain for schools and colleges. Let me tell you why. It should be and should be not only for you, it should be part of the curriculum at one point, I would say. Well, many, many colleges have adopted it. I know Symbiosis say in Pure, as they are working very closely, I'm on the Academic uh, Council of uh, Symbiosis. We've created this, a, a four year fintech program. So I know San, we are creating a lot of blockchain programs as well. So there's a lot happening in that space. That's just one such example. There's a lot of ha things happening in many, many places. But let me explain to you why. My first statement is this, and um, listen to it very carefully. Blockchain is an institutional technology, not just an information technology. And there is a huge difference between the two. Uh, what's an institution? 
Well, your college or a university is an institution. The government is an institution. The media is the in institution. What's an institution? Institution is uh, something which is going to be there right forever. Your colleges, your university is going to be there. Students will come. Students will go. Faculty will come. Faculty will go. But the university remains exactly where it was and where it is. It's an institution. We respect institutions. Now, another thing is blockchain is an institution also because blockchain is the only technology that has the power to monetize and tokenize, which brings us to a very new subject going to be a very popular subject in the future, and that's called tokenomics. While we learn economics, great, but the world of tokens and crypto is going to be only if we know tokenomics. It's going to be there relevant only once we understand tokenomics, but that's a story for another day. But then again, it all starts in schools and colleges. So institution revolutions are also things that don't happen very often. The first one was in 95, and that was, as we all know, the internet. And today, we all know what we can do or without, without the internet. We feel we are lost. No YouTube, no WhatsApp, no nothing. No mails, no chat. It's pretty sad, right? Well, that's exactly how blockchain is coming 25, 27 years down the line. It's the second revolution. It's the next revolution. And it's going to be the bigger revolution than the internet. While well, the internet set a beautiful base, now we are seeing the internet uh, in the blockchain, sorry. All right, so let's have a look at some, you know, I want, I always start with the writing is on the wall. You must know what's happening in India. We can talk about the world later on, but let's see what's happening right here in our backyard. According to NASCOM, crypto tech has the potential to create more than 8 lakh jobs by 2030. Wow, right up from 50,000. If today we've got 50,000 in 2022, by 2030, we expect 800,000, means we'd almost require 100,000 jobs every year on year on year for the next six, seven, eight years. Now that's a really huge ask. And from where is it gonna start? From schools and colleges. That's why we, all you and me must know crypto. I'm still a student of crypto and blockchain, guys. I mean, I have passed college, uh, passed out of college in 80s, 1980, 81, but I still learn. I'm still the biggest student of this fantastic technology. All right, let me go further. Industry is expecting to reach 241 million in size by 2030. Right now, it's around 40 million to 50 million. It's going to become 241 million by 2030. This is all uh, there in a NASCOM report. So these are not numbers which I'm just picking out of thin air, but these are numbers of certain value. 241. Yeah, thank you. All right, so that's the second thing. Third, $6.6 .6 billion have been invested by Indian retail investors in different crypto assets. Well, India has got the second highest number of wallets in, in the world, more or less, you know? So we have the maximum number of wallets, maximum number of people trading on crypto exchanges. That's 6.6 .6 billion have already been invested. And this number was already, this was a 2021 number, we got another four or five months. A lot of things have happened since then. But yes, 6.6 .6 billion is a huge number. And more and more people are getting into the space in spite of markets going haywire. The crypto industry also has the potential to create an economic value of 184 billion in form of investments and cost savings. Now you can imagine 184 billion in form of investments and cost saving by 2030. Well, I've read, I've read a lot of numbers out here, but what do the numbers mean? They all mean opportunity, opportunity, and more opportunity. Well, let me show you some more opportunities. Well, as even from tier two and tier three cities, investors have grown by 2,648%. 2,648%. 
that's mind boggling. We feel that only in tier one, tier two, tier one cities, people talk about crypto. No guys, the biggest crypto fanatics are in tier two and tier three. And out of these, you'll be surprised to know that almost 60% of them are women. That's right. That's something which we should know. And I'm very happy about that. So adoption of the crypto market has grown 80% this last year. And crypto investments have gone up tremendously. All these numbers, again, mean only one thing, guys. Opportunity, opportunity, and again, more opportunity. So here we all know Mr. Jack Ma. Everybody knows Jack Ma. Well, recently somebody by the same name died, and he got the flack. But he's very much alive and healthy and fine. So he said, and these lines should remain with you at whatever age you are. You're a student, you're a faculty, you're you and me. This, these are the next three four slides. Please bookmark them in your lives because this is going to come to you at some point of your life. And you'll say, yes, I heard that somewhere. What's the first one? Blockchain technology will be a very critical technology for the future development of the world. I'm a strong believer of blockchain technology, says Jack Ma, and we all know who's Jack Ma. He's the guy who founded Alibaba and one of the most richest men in the world as well. As well. Now, he didn't say it just for fun. He also holds the maximum number of patents in the blockchain space. That's the first thing. This is something also, as you as students, as you as professionals start moving into the world markets, there's going to be a question. Is it in the database? Of course, it's in the database. Everything is in the database. We live in the digital world, for God's sake. But the question is going to be replaced very soon. People are going to ask, is it on the blockchain? That's the second thing. Remember that. Third, as revolutionary as it sounds, blockchain is a mechanism to bring everyone to the highest degree of accountability. Means it is going to once, now it's going to soon become the one single source of truth. People may believe each other or not, systems or not, but blockchain, they will believe. So coming up again, with the potential estimates, of the prospects of employment have now become substantial. Let's have a look. Before I tell you about jobs and why we should know and why we should understand crypto, what is crypto, what can we do with it, what we can't do with it, what are NFTs, what's Web3.0, I'll just briefly touch on all these things as well. But let's understand the India blockchain journey because that journey is going to be this, whatever I'm going to tell you now is going to be very, very impactive over the next few years, in the next few decades, for that matter. So what's the journey? Well, these are three documents which I've shown here. One was published in Jan 2020 called the Blockchain India Strategy by BPIO. Second in Jan 2021, a year later, all this came amid COVID. National Strategy on Blockchain came in Jan 2021. And then in December came the National Strategy on Blockchain Part 2, Basically, the documents, very beautiful documents, you can download them all from the net. It's, they basically tell you about what are the challenges in the space, what are the problems, what are the problem areas it solves, what is needed to be done, what should be the strategy, who should be the players, how should be the collaborations, and what should be done next. And you know what? One of the key things they told was bring about education in blockchain. And that, I guess, guys, is what we're talking about here. But more important, these are all government documents. If the government is serious about, serious about blockchain, we already know the writing on the wall. There are going to be lots and lots of blockchain projects. And who executes these projects? All the big boys like IBM, Accenture, Deloitte, PWCs, etc. As a result, when you get into these jobs or related companies, you will be encountering blockchain. Let's quickly have a look at the numbers. Again, I'll very quickly go through this. I won't take too much time on this, but by 2018, 90% of banks had already begun exploration on blockchain. And do you know that in India also, seven private sector banks have moved onto the blockchain. Not everything's on the blockchain, but some critical functions of a bank are on the blockchain. In this case, trade settlements, so seven led by Axis Bank have already moved in. And surprises of surprises, 
a public sector bank also a few months back moved their processes onto a blockchain, and that was the State Bank of India. When large banks, including state banks, start moving towards blockchain, we know blockchain is going to be part of our lives. We can't see it. Yeah, it's behind the scenes. We can't feel it. Really, we can't. But we should know about it. Our awareness should be there that why are they moving onto the blockchain? There is a reason. We'll come to that later. But bottom line is they are moving. And because they are moving, you as students of the future should also start moving in that direction. Accent just says blocks can reduce banks' infrastructure costs by 30%. That's a lot of money. And by end of 2024, blockchain market is going to go 20 billion in annual revenues. These are big numbers, yes. IBM is now doing about 3,000 employees working on 600 blockchain projects. That's only one company. PwC says there are 270 billion in assets across. Well, that's, that's become even more now. This was last year. Now we have Gartner. It says projects will add 360 billion of value to businesses. Some of the world's largest banks are investing 50 billion to build a blockchain-based digital cash settlement system. Now this is done. And JP Morgan is running this. And all the banks which I mentioned in the Indian banks are now moved on to the JP Morgan blockchain for the banking sector. Healthcare market going to grow, Forbes, IDC, Gartner, all numbers, all great numbers, but let's see. You must, see, when you see the numbers, you must also know why. Why is blockchain becoming so mainstream? Do you also know that, you know, before I go further, countries like El Salvador have now accepted Bitcoin as their legal tender, as their legal currency. Like this, Central Africa, this country in Central Africa also, they also accepted it. Many, many more countries are exploring the options. Zimbabwe, Mexico, Paraguay, Uruguay. So are even Argentina and Brazil and Mexico are actually contemplating a lot of moving or at least adopting blockchain, uh, sorry, Bitcoin as one of their currencies. Well, that's a very big step. 10 years back, if I had said that, people would have called me a fool. Today, it's become a reality. It's just like 10, 15 years back. We, whoever thought we'll do GPay, Google Pay, Paytm, et cetera, we never knew that. Today, every, even the man on the street, a fruit seller, vegetable seller, everybody can use from a millionaire to a vendor, everyone uses, can use GPay. That's the transformation. And that's the transformation blockchain is beginning to get it also. Now let's see, just, I'm gonna just have top four or five reasons why you should have an idea. First of all, it's cutting edge technology. It's a technology which has been around for some time. Yeah, so it was there before 2008 as well. 2008 was the Bitcoin paper, which was you know, published, uh, which talked about the, you know, this completely revolutionary technology. But it has always been there for a long time, only it was put into a system around 2008 and 2009 was the first time when people started using, you know, the first transaction of blockchain was held on January 3rd, which is also celebrated as the birthday of blockchain. All right, that's fine. Happy birthday coming up next year. Coming back, it's cutting edge because it's an amalgam of distributed ledger technologies. It's one of the most, it, it distributes your data so that Nobody can steal your data. Nobody can tamper with your data. Nobody can hack into your data. And that's why it's cutting edge because today, whatever technologies we have, all great technologies, but they are, a lot of them are on centralized databases. All our data is on centralized databases. We can't decentralize it with any other technology. Means if it's all in centralized databases, it has an opportunity to get hacked, stolen, corrupted, modified, altered, well, lots of things. Blockchain, however, is distributed, disintermediated, and therefore, and immutable, and therefore cutting edge. They are the only ones who can actually do, make this happen. So that's one great thing. Second, blockchain experts are now in high demand. Wow, yes, I know this for sure. Uh, it's, you know, uh, two years back, I would say two, two and a half years back, I was doing about two or three meetings a day. 
Today, I do 12 to 14 meetings a day. Ah, uh, well, yes, I am in demand. Yes, I'm very happy. I'm not complaining. I'm just stating a fact. The fact is, there is a huge demand for blockchain experts. And when I say huge, it's massive. There are times when I just don't know how to say no also, and I end up having 15, 16 meetings in a day. It's a, it's a big pain. And they're from all parts of the world. Blockchain is without boundaries. We get requests from the USA, Australia, Europe, Singapore, Cambodia, Vietnam, everywhere, Africa. So you got to have a 24 seven calendar. I have just now started putting my calendar for five, six days. Otherwise it was even Sundays. It's terrible, but it's also very good. But bottom line is it's a huge area and you should be looking at it. Even if you want to become a blockchain consultant or a startup, you should be looking at that. Being skilled in blockchain positions us at the forefront of change. When you are part of a revolutionary technology, not only as a student, but as an institution or as a faculty, we are in the forefront of change because this is the biggest change. It has changed the paradigms of the financial sector and now every other sector. So it's wonderful for us to be a part of something new, something revolutionary. That's what blockchain is. Before I even go further, I'll, I'll just clarify, clarify one thing for those who may or may not know. I'm sure most of us know this, but I'll just say it anyways. People ask me about blockchain and talk about crypto. And people talk about crypto and then people talk about investments in Bitcoin. First of all, let me tell you one thing. Even though there is a relationship between the three, they are not all the same. Bitcoin is a great use case of the underlying technology that is the blockchain technology. It's a great use case. Today, I can name 50 more use cases. Blockchain, Bitcoin is just one such use case. However, it did a good thing. It makes people realize, well, how does the technology work? So if you understand Bitcoin, you will understand blockchain and vice versa. It is linked, but not the same. So that's one thing. Now, come back here. Adoption of blockchain in governance systems. Well, you do know that Dubai, for example, has now become the first blockchain city. Every process, every you know, government process on the governance side is on the blockchain. Trade, e-governance, certificates, you name them, licenses, driving licenses, all these processes have gone onto the blockchain. Surprises of surprises, even India for that matter. And a lot of people think in India, we don't have, we don't, we don't deploy new technology. We do. 90 plus use cases of blockchain across 14 states. And that is by the government of India. The government of India has uh, 90 plus projects ongoing at different levels, include, and most of them are in the e, of course, in the e-governance, supply chain, ration, public distribution system, certifications, so on and so forth. So this is a very big thing when, and when uh, governments uh, do a lot of uh, governments work, everybody you know, says, well, if the government says it's nice, oh, I'll accept it. Yes, why not? So that's one of the big things which has happened. The government has started doing it. And there are also, for example, the Tamil Nadu government, in fact, has its own policy. It's the first complete, it's the first one to have its own policy. India doesn't have a blockchain policy, but the Tamil Nadu government has. Now slowly more states are coming into this picture and soon we'll have an India policy at some point of time. That's going to be massive. The next thing is it's got a universal infrastructure facility. Well, blockchains don't belong to any one nation or any one, one country or a geography. Their, their, their technology, the nodes are everywhere. The community is spread across the globe and the infrastructure is everywhere. That's a great thing because, well, once you have infrastructure everywhere, it becomes global. And that's exactly what's happening in blockchain. It is now completely global. Okay, now let's have a look at it. Just give me a second. Uh, one sec. I have somebody going on phoning me and saying I can't join the webinar. So just sending them link. All right. So that's the next thing. 
The sixth, data security and digital identity. You know, guys, today, 36.7 lakh marketing companies have your data. They have your Aadhaar card. They have your PAN card. And they have everything, whatever you have submitted at some point to a bank or to Vodafone or Airtel or wherever you have submitted your documents. They are sold and they're everywhere. 36.7 lakh marketing agencies, not people, marketing agencies. That's a lot of people having your Aadhaar, PAN, passport, election card, driving license. Wow, you are subject to risk. Anything can happen now. Well, data security needs to be tightened. Today we say, oh, we've got cybersecurity. Sure, good for you. But cybersecurity, guys, stopped working a long time back. It's not the same. Yes, it's got, it works in some places, but most of the places, people are smarter than cybersecurity, guys. The protocols have not really changed over the years, but hackers have become smarter. And therefore, LinkedIn gets hacked, Domino's gets hacked, banks get hacked, everybody gets hacked. No security. Even our prime minister's web, personal website was hacked uh, a couple of months, a few months ago. That's not great. Second is the digital identity. Today, I'm telling you one more thing. Don't get scared. But many of you with your, you know, would have definitely somebody by the same name roaming around somewhere with your documents. They have made their own digital identity with your documents. Not difficult. Now it's a little difficult with Aadhaar and the biometrics, but otherwise before, not difficult. Even today, I know people who've got a couple of Aadhaar cards, more than a you know, few PAN cards. God knows how they do it. But bottom line is it's not secure. Your life is not secure. Your data is not secure. Your money is not secure because you must have read hundreds of instances over the last few weeks, months of people losing their money to online frauds especially people asking for your OTP, blah, 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 and all that, and, or downloading some wrong apps and that those apps, they suck in all your data and, and you know, your banking information, et cetera. A lot of things happening. It's not safe. Students are young. They will not realize it right now, but as we grow, it's going to be a very big headache for a lot of us. I'm sure some of us may have even, may have even experienced it at some point. Blockchain basically solves this big problem multiple industries on blockchain. Initially, it was only the financial sector which went on the blockchain, but now you have multiple industries on the blockchain. You've got, uh, you know, apart from, you've got real estate on blockchain, you've got uh, supply chain, healthcare, e-governance, retail, hospitality. You've got so many on that, almost energy, renewable energy. Everyone's on the blockchain, guys. Every sector. As we speak today, I'm working on 57 different use cases across industry. You name the industry and there are use cases in that. That's why blockchain is not specific to any one industry. It's across. It's agnostic to industry. That makes it unique. The digital identity and the new age KYC. I, all of us have got at least four or five ID cards. We've got PAN card. We've got an Aadhaar card. We've got a driving license, maybe an election card, maybe some other cards as well. But imagine if you have to change your address, you have to write to each one of them and what a pain it is. You try and take a bank loan if you have a different, now a different address on your card and a different one in your driving license, different one in your Aadhaar card, they'll make you run around a little bit. Apart from that, many, many other things. Basic and they can be stolen. The database is not secure also. I don't know whether you know, a lot of government data is available on the dark, net, dark web right now. Seriously, almost all data which you want is available on the dark web. Just got to pay the price for it. It's all there. It's all hacked. It's all up there. So the digital identity in UHKYC will protect your identity and only you will have the power to share it. This is going to be one of the biggest turning points of blockchain. Almost every country will soon move towards bringing their national IDs and KYCs onto the blockchain keeping them safe, secure, and permissionable. You will have the power to share. You will have the power to decide whether you want to share or not. No one can force you. Nobody can take you. Today, all your data is with everybody, as I told you. Besides that, 
Whenever you go into a website, you can't log in without an email ID and a phone number or something. They always ask you for it. They make money out of it, guys. Look at the Googles, the Facebooks, the Amazons. Look at the big guys. You think they're making money by giving you free Facebooks? No way. They sell data. All of them sell your data. Your data is their gold because data is infinite. Everything else is finite. Data is infinite. Terabytes of data churned out minute by minute every day. Wow. They're making money out of you and you get nothing. You give your email ID, you give your phone number, you get nothing. You'll get pesky calls, you'll get stupid mails, you'll get spam, but you won't get any money for it. Now, you will have the power. Whereas we move into Web 3.0, which is the part of the blockchain ecosystem, you will be in power of, in control of your data and get monetized for it if you want to share it. So that's another thing. Nine, the rise and rise of cryptocurrencies and ICOs. Are you aware that about there are about 18,000 plus different cryptocurrencies and tokens? 18,000 plus. I'm sure most of us can't name more than 10, 15 of them. But there are 18,000 plus. And we don't have to know all of them, that's for sure. I also don't know them. But that means only one thing. It is becoming extremely popular and it is becoming extremely mainstream. And 18,000 currencies, more than the currencies, more than the fiat currencies or our regular currencies of the world anyways. So that's big. Because they're going up and up, we should be having more awareness about them. And finally, oh, that's my favorite, Great job prospects and super pay. I think the video which I showed in the beginning should have established that. Or well, recently I was talking to the chief blockchain officer of a private sector bank. He had about maybe four or five years experience in blockchain and about five, six years other IT experience. He was the chief blockchain officer of a private sector bank and his salary was, yep, 2.1 crores per annum. Wow. Uh, we love that. Right, don't we? Yes, but not only for him. There are salaries for others are in great demand and fantastic salaries. I'll come to that. Now we come to the job scenario and we can't get jobs unless we learn crypto in colleges and schools. I mean, we can learn them later also, but why not learn them in colleges and schools? I am, you know, uh, we recently from the Middle East, we got a request for creating courses for grade eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12 crypto courses, because the young generation is going to move into the crypto world. When they come into the real world, they will be talking about cryptos. They will be dealing in cryptos. They will be dealing in blockchains and blockchains deal with cryptos. So it's going to be something which they should know. They should also know tokenomics, the new economics, the new era of economics so without that we got to be left behind and some others will go in front so why should we let's have a look at the job scenario in india and uh, we'll also see guys i'll tell you some good stuff about this as well one of the biggest gaps identified was talent upskilling for those who are working oh you don't have it demand for blockchain talent is growing at 40 percent per quarter 40 percent that's all. Look at this part. A shortage of skilled resources with expert. This is, this is a NASCOM report. I've taken this from a NASCOM report. There is a shortage of skilled resources with expertise in blockchain. There are only 45 to 60,000 skilled resources were industry ready globally. Well, this was some time back. Maybe it's about 100,000 now. But just 100,000 resources in the blockchain space globally? Yeah, that's really shocking because blockchain is big. So where are the people? The people are going to come from the future schools and future colleges. In India, service providers are finding it really difficult to hire resources. They don't have it. There are so many projects, but where are the people? Remember the report which said we need 800,000 people. Trust me, even they will not be enough. So, well, I'll go further. 
blockchain development jobs are some of the fastest growing and highest in demand jobs globally, not only in India, there's a latent potential within Indian service. So when we started our organization also, we wanted to build the capacity of blockchain professionals. So we have, we want to become the Nalanda of the world in blockchain. We want to have the best of blockchain talent. People should come to India and study blockchain. We're doing that. We have, I have a lot of foreigners who are my clients now. A lot of them learn from us. It's a great thing. We have a lot of talent in India. I believe India has the most powerful tech for talent force in India. And that's what one of the doing. You know, even right now, you just search it, job growth is still concentrated. 8,700 job openings today with nearly 40% in the United States. That puts me in another, I'll, I'll give you another very nice quick little tidbit. One of my uh, guys, I trained him to become a smart contract writer, just focusing on smart contracts because there was a huge demand for them. Maybe about a year, he, he interned with us for about a year, year and a half, two years. And then he says, sir, I want, I'm, I'm looking for a job in the USA. We got him a job in the USA, a starting salary of over 100,000 US dollars, all 24 years old, 23 or 24 year old guy. 100,000 US dollars, he's working remotely. He's working in India, earning in dollars. What could be better? With the dollar prices becoming 77, 78 rupees yesterday. Wow, he's, he's doing good. He doesn't care if the dollar price falls. He'll be happy. But that's what I'm trying to say is, there are going to be lots of jobs here. With jobs come salaries, guys. Who's not going to study blockchain after this? Let's see. The salary of blockchain professionals depend on factors like location, etc. But in this domain, salary is increasing 2,000 to 6,000%. Wow. Guys, if I was back in college, I know what I would do. Any, a blockchain professional salary in India is 50 to 100% higher than other jobs. So if you're an engineer, great, good for us. But if you're a blockchain engineer, well, your salary is going up 50 to 200%. Oh, isn't that wonderful? It is wonderful. So if you say, if I study crypto and if I study blockchain, what am I going to get? Well, I can become a developer. I can become an engineer, I can become a quality engineer, data scientist, tech architect, analyst, risk analyst, and become a project manager. And if I don't have uh, too much of tech knowledge and I wanna be still in the blockchain space, I can become a product manager, I can become a recruiter, I can become a blockchain attorney, like a chartered accountant who understands blockchains, rules and regulations, cross-border uh, compliances, et cetera. You can become blockchain business development and marketing. They're in very big demand. You can become an ICO advisor. ICO stands for Initial Coin, of coin Offering because every blockchain project offers its coin for, you know, for, to the public for sale. And then somebody has to advise people about it, inform people about it. So we need ICO as well. advisors, another great job. And of course, you have crypto journalists. Crypto journalists is another great there are lots of portals on, on the blockchain, uh, blockchain portals now. And crypto journalists are in extremely high demand, extremely high demand. I've summed it up in a blockchain opportunity wheel. There are about 16 different opportunities here. If you see this, a blockchain engineer, he gets a nine on 10. That's the market demand. You look at the other side. What is his marketing specialist? He's also nine on 10. So if you're a techie or a non-techie, well, blockchain's there right for you. Analyst, I, these are all the jobs I've told you. Anyways, now, NFTs. How many of you have NFTs? You know something, guys? Uh, may not be today, but at some point of time, I can work with you and tell you how you can become NFT experts or start your own NFT as a business. Could be a side business to start with, and then you can really grow it. NFTs are the new way of actually earning not only crypto, money, and also, you know, ap applying your knowledge to new age technology. So NFT also suddenly, all of a sudden, lots of job opportunities in the NFT space. You can become any of these marketing specialists, moderator, meme artist, so developer, UI UX, smart contract. Uh, Economics analyst. Yep. 
hang on, let me just put it. All right, influencer marketing, lots of opportunities. Just have a look at these. These are plenty of them that are going to come. A year back, not a single of these opportunities existed. Well, in India at least. Now, people keep asking me to give them NFT professionals. That's just one part of it. What about the metaverse? We all heard about the metaverse. A wonderful place where we can go and nobody's going to judge us, where we can have fun, we can enjoy concerts, we can do anything. Why? We can spend our cryptos in the metaverse in some cases also. We can, we, we can use our NFTs for exchange in the metaverse. Lots of things happening in the metaverse, guys. It's your alternate universe. You can buy land also there. By the way, Taj Mahal is on sale on the metaverse also. You can buy the pyramids, you can buy what you like out there. It's your world. But more important, of course, each of these subjects, which I'm telling you with the NFT or the metaverse, we can talk about that at some other day. That's a much larger topic, but the opportunities, and therefore, we all must know the crypto blockchain world. The research scientists, hardware developers, software developers, planners like city planners, cybersecurity experts in the space, eco ecosystem developers, NFT strategists, Basically, NFT strategists will see how NFTs can be utilized in the metaverse and so on. That's a lot of opportunity, guys. And this, again, a year back, these jobs did not exist, or a very few anyways. This is what's happening. Jobs are coming in spaces where we never thought they would come. And yeah, you guys, have you heard of the Web 3.0 jobs? When, of course, jobs. Have you heard of Web 3.0? Well, as I was telling you, the next level of social media will be on Web 3.0. All your Google, Facebooks and Twitters and all, they will be all so very soon. Either they will come on the, you know, on the blockchain and Web 3.0, or they'll have to modify because new players will start coming in and challenging these. Because here is going to be a content economy where you will be rewarded for your content. You will be also... You know, you would be given credit and your information will not be shared with anybody. That's going to be a big change. So there's a huge opportunity even in the Web 3.0 space. The software developers, specialists, brand specialists. Do you know that the top brands of the world, like Gucci, MasterCard, Dolce Gabbana, Nike, Adidas, Budweiser, Coca-Cola are all on the web. That's right. They're all on the web, web 3.0 and they're all going towards the metaverse. So they are all going to be, all the people which I mentioned here, smart contract auditors, engineers, all of these. And where are they going to come from, guys? They're going to come from colleges and schools. They're going to come from the new generation, Generation Z. They're going to come from there. And therefore, if somebody asks me, cryptos for schools and, you know, what are you doing? I'll say I'm making them ready for a future world. Don't you think we should be ready for the future world? We should be ready for the future world. So that's something. And before I wind up, all of us should literally understand this. There is a future ahead by 2030, not very far, just eight years from now. I made some predictions out there. So far, all the predictions I've made have been always been correct. And I'm happy about that because the prediction is not based on guesswork, but on facts and solid data. So here are my next ones for the next eight years. Prediction one, we are going to have a lot of trillion dollar protocols. By 2030, trillion dollar companies will become trillion dollar tokenized companies. The traditional companies will start moving towards tokenizing their assets, their networks, their systems, everything will become tokenized. And we're going to have more tokenized economies than we have now. You're going to have maybe the Amazons will have its tokens. Maybe the Facebooks will have its own. They have a Facebook has a plan. Anyway, it's changed its name to Meta. So they do have a plan. The Twitters and everybody will soon have Twitters, uh, you know, starting off with NFTs of their own. They're all moving towards a tokenized economy. By 2030, there will be, instead of, we're we not going to be just calling trillion dollar companies, they're trillion dollar protocols, tokenized companies. That's going to be one big prediction. Second, blockchain identity for all life. I already mentioned it, that we need the KYC on the blockchain. Yes. So by 2030, a cross-border blockchain-based self, basically there'll be a time, another 10 years time, when you don't even have to carry your passport or anything else. You will carry your KYC on a blockchain and 
it'll be like a scanning a code or you know whatever and then that's it you don't need any other type of identity you can just go across borders with your blockchain identity because that is going to be one thing which no one can ever replicate no one can fake no one can make it changes any in that you can't do it under any circumstances and that's going to be the most trustworthy kyc ever it's going to become your blockchain identity every one of us will have a blockchain identity that's the second prediction of mine third prediction the emergence of virtual assets well it's already begun virtual assets are all of different type whether they are nfts whether there's land which is being owned on the metaverse these are all virtual do you even realize that whenever we make online transfers of money or purchases it's actually virtual nothing you're not really giving money it's just going from your account from one digital account to another digital account everything is going to become in the same space today we have companies which are which we have fractionalized gold we have fractionalized real estate we have fractionalized assets everything and virtual assets like this like virtual gold virtual land will outstrip all physical assets we are moving very fast guys if we don't keep up the pace now it might be too late prediction 4 world trade is on the blockchain oh yes by 2030 most of the world trade will be conducted leveraging blockchain technology why because you can track and trace complete supply chains will be on the blockchain your logistics warehousing inventory everything will be on the blockchain and why should it not be because blockchain is going to be the single source of truth ask walmart who was one of the early adopters of blockchain these guys said yes we put it on the blockchain and look at that after that they've had savings trust everything i'll tell you that story another day but prediction number 5 blockchain is going to be used for good that's right by 2030 the world standard of living will be attributed to the development of blockchain technology i'll give you a very nice example and i would like you to be a part of it at some point of your time there is a wonderful program called c s e a now what does c do well it is using the blockchain to lock in environmental data do you also know that in about 10 to 12 years all our seas and oceans will die overfishing pollution plastic all are contributing towards the death of our rivers and seas imagine your life without water hell we can live without food for some time without water sorry we can't we won't survive coming back what does sea do it just uses your smartphone and there are 6.3 billion smartphones across the world which automatically capture data locks it onto the blockchain where it can never be altered then we use artificial intelligence algorithms and make models of the data and provide them to researchers countries governments so that we can monitor our environment and make changes at the right time you know guys if 20 years back this technology had existed we wouldn't have had these hot summers unseasonal rains melting of the snow caps melting of so many glaciers we've seen a, we've had floods in germany we never who never had floods we've seen bushfires and wildfires in canada and australia all this is a result of global warming this we can't prevent many things but we can actually take action when we see right data and the right data is only going to be on the blockchain now c uh, is a, is a wonderful uh, initiative which is actually doing that you should join the community uh, in my uh, my in my, uh, my request you should do that why because they are actually making a difference and they're doing it on the blockchain the data will be locked on the blockchain otherwise right now all data is manipulated every data is manipulated to suit the person who's selling it so anyways that's one there's another one called dasi digital art for social impact they are using you know they are you know there are uneducated children in cambodia it started off with cambodia it's coming to india now i i brought it to india as well so we started in cambodia where we have these young kids who are sold in slavery or they are sent to work you know in very inhuman conditions 
they can't get education. So we have this initiative called DASI where we ask them to make one one painting each and we have a site in which we put it up as an NFT and people can buy their paintings and the money is collected for it goes towards their children's education. And that's a wonderful initiative. It goes for the education. Now somebody might say, how do the kids get the money? Well, the kids don't get the money. The parents get the money. Then somebody will say, oh, the parents might spend it on booze or liquor or other clothes or whatever. No, they can't because it is money on smart contracts, which is exactly what blockchain is. We've created smart contracts, which is the blockchain initiative. And that with smart contract, it goes only for education. We partnered with education institutions and only will go to them for education, not for fun, not for a holiday, not for buying a bicycle. It'll be for specifically for their education. That's blockchain for good. There are many more examples. I can keep talking about that uh, for the rest of my life. I'm doing 10 projects myself of blockchain for good. So I'm very, very excited about that all the time. So what are the next steps we must take as students or as teachers, as faculty? Well, here are the following. Let's learn the fundamentals of blockchain technology. That includes crypto, that includes NFT, that includes Web 3.0, that includes everything we, we need to know DeFi, decentralized finance fintech we need to know all these things these are the this is the new lexicon of the future second learn the platforms let's learn about the different blockchain platforms let's learn about ethereum let's learn about hyperledger let's learn about litecoin let's learn about so many solana cardano so many of them so many just learn about them they are good they're doing really good let's learn about binance there are so many wonderful platforms then let's explore Let's explore the disruption blockchain is bringing in industries. Also put your mind, where can I use blockchain now? Now that we know a little bit more about it, where can I utilize this technology? Wherever there is a chance of fraud, wherever there is a chance of information leak, wherever there is a third party, and wherever there is safety security required, that's F-I-T-S, in the FITS model. If any of these, your answers are, is my data secure? Yes, no. So any of these, wherever the answer is no, that's where you apply blockchain. Is my data secure? If your answer is no, you apply blockchain. If there is a chance of a fraud, then you should apply blockchain. That's how you need the FITS model. Information, yes, if your information needs to be secured, put in blockchain. T, if there are too many third-party people in the way, like in supply chain, that's where you need blockchain. In short, you need blockchain almost everywhere. Explore that, think about it. Get certified, get yourself certified guys. Good jobs ahead. Analyze, understand industry, learn to implement solutions, think. You can always ask me anytime. I'm happy to help any of our students out here or anybody, forget the students, anybody. Keep up to date with industry solutions and applications. That's always a good way to know what's happening in this space and mind you, Blockchain is the fastest moving, most dynamic space. What was relevant six months back may not be relevant today. Keep your ear to the ground. There's a lot happening in this space, guys. Well, do you want to learn now, guys? Well, at us, I'm sure that uh, you, know, you may have got a better idea of blockchain. And some of you who had an idea of blockchain can start thinking, let's talk block now. Let's learn how to talk blockchain. Second, let's teach, let's learn how to print NFTs. Have a side income if you like, or a full-fledged career. Well, I can teach you that. I'll be very happy if anybody wants to learn. Well, I'll also teach you how to send and receive tokens. How, how to open a, you know, I'll, basically the idea is I, you, I will show you a website just now immediately after my presentation where I can teach you how to actually practice your trading. If you want to actually be safe before you trade, learn to practice. Learn to swim before you dive into the deep blue sea, guys. I'll show you that website. You'll learn how to receive and send tokens there. You'll also be see there also you can see how to set up wallets, how to make your own dApps. What are dApps? Just like your regular apps, but they're decentralized, therefore safer. How to walk into the metaverse. You should do that because the metaverse is your future at one point. Learn responsible crypto trading. And I'll show you that also and learn how to get your startup running. This and much more crypto teaches us. This is just the tip of the proverbial iceberg. Once you do this, 
you will be opening a whole new avenue of life and life-changing experiences. And that's what blockchain is all about. That's what crypto is all about. Changing lives, changing futures. With that, guys, I will end my presentation. And before I go off completely, I will show you that website as well. Now, where is the website? Let me show you. I have a chat here. Yes, right, little space. Yes. Okay. I'm going to open that site and I'm going to get into, let's show you that. Some of you may know it. Those of you don't enjoy this site is really good. Just a minute. All right. I'm going to share my screen again. And here we go and have a look at this. Those who want to know how to trade, build your wallets, etc., go to this website called Crypto Parrot. Okay, there is no real money involved here. It's a trading simulator. You just learn, you know how to start putting up your accounts. You will learn how to trade. You will learn how to use your coins and lots, lots more. But this is the beginning of everybody. We have to, open, if you are going to trade also in crypto, we got to learn how to open our accounts. We got to have our wallets, how to create our wallets. It's all here. I would really recommend if you're in the crypto space and if you want to trade a little bit, before you actually trade, do it here. It's re real time, but it's not with real money. That's the beauty. So with that, I would like to say thank you folks for listening in. And uh, I could speak for hours and hours. I could speak for days on this subject. It's my favorite subject. If you have any questions, I'll take them now. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Raj, sir. It was fantastic. And much appreciated. I think uh, the students were all spellbound. Uh, so guys, uh, we have opened the forum for questions. So if anybody has any questions. I like Prashant. I like Prashant's chat. He says my favorite too. Right, Prashant? So yeah, we have two of us now here. Anybody else's favorite? We'll see. Right, <clears> any <throat> questions? Ah, I see one of my old students also here, Anita Kernar. Oh, how are you, Anita? That's a name I recognize. So guys, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask, sir. He's here for a, he in fact canceled another uh, meeting and he caught on to my meeting because I actually had to chase him for quite some time for this. No, but Deacon so, is a good guy. I would do it for Deacon. I would not you, do it for anybody else probably. But uh, yes, for Deacon, yes. Thank you, thank you. So anybody has any questions, guys, please ask. Uh, uh, if you Anita. Is there any official degree in blockchain? The only official degree in blockchain is from international universities. The University of Nicosia has the world's number one program on blockchain. If you want, I can send you the link, Anita. Uh, we are partners. Uh, India Blockchain Alliance is a partner. And by the way, uh, the blockchain program is rated number one ahead of MIT in USA. So that just shows how powerful that program is. It's rated number one in the world. It's ahead of Stanford, Howard, and MIT. So that's your answer. Wow. Interested. Good. I'll send you the link. Any other questions, guys? Please feel free to ask. You can always ask Deacon later on also. Okay. Uh, Prashant is asking me one question. Do we have any community where we can meet and where I could learn closely with you? Yes, Prashant. First of all, you can join our page, India Blockchain Alliance. You can follow that. Once you do that, at some point of time, there is always a Telegram group. I have right now 28,000 people in my Telegram group. So I'm making another one. So let me, uh, when I make that, when you join the India Blockchain Alliance page, I, from there, I will put you onto the Telegram group also, where you can you know, network and speak to others also. And I share a lot of information. You can be part of it. Be part of my journey. I'm happy to be with you. Fantastic. Great. Anybody else? Any questions? Saurabh, do you have any question? You are very keen to know more on blockchain. Saurabh? Yes. I'm looking forward to learn it. I'm chasing the answer from the blog. Yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, Saurabh met me in Pune and he was been chasing me from that time. The point thing was I actually forgot for some time because there are 100 things going on in my mind. But now I remember when I remember, when I saw Saurabh's message, I said, okay, I, I owe him one. So for that, I'll make sure he gets a very, very low cost pricing for a course. Yep, thank you. Also, uh, also I'm going to be regularly doing a series on NFTs, 
metaverse and how to actually there's a huge opportunity for people in nft also they can actually mint their own nfts and make money today we just i signed one of the i've done completed one of the biggest projects in nft where you don't have to pay gas fees to get onto the nft bandwagon and that is something very unique so and it's a cross chain nft it means you can go to nft all up from one point which so far is not possible so not, not has not been possible but that's another thing for another day so anybody wants to know more follow my page deacon kenshir is nft legal in india answer is no form of tokens are legal or illegal in india there is no policy around it okay so as, when there is no policy it is still legal however all the companies which are in the nft space etc are not registered in india they are all outside india where it is legally allowed and that's how it exists including all our exchanges by the way including all our exchanges everybody even, is out of india correct even binance is now headquartered in dubai binance is in dubai yes completely binance is in dubai all the others that you look at it there is only one uh, i would say buy you coin is the only uh, domestic uh, yeah, exchange in india and uh, well they are also thinking of going out if in, in, in the, if the government does not make any decision fast uh, they'll also probably shift out like a lot of our talent has shifted out of india that's a sad thing but i would like india to be a superpower in in blockchain anyways are they good nft platforms from your concern yes uh, if you want i can give you one have a look at there is i'll just type it down you can have a look at it it's very nice you know meta dot com then you can see dasi global dot com these are good have a look dasi global is the one which i talked to you about that does for good as blockchain for good you know meta is for profit both i'll give you one of each fantastic only anita asking questions nobody else she was he always asked lots of questions and also you should if you are environment friendly you should join this website you should join the community of this c.earth join the community it doesn't cost you anything you'll get to know a lot of things and be very some of them very scary how the world is going to die in another 10 to 12 years because of our pollution because of our plastic because of our absolute lack of uh, disregard for our environment what are your views on stable coins the projects like terra viable well we all know what has happened to terra today we also know that one year almost a year back it was a over 100 dollars today is less than 20 cents and uh, that this is an exception it's not the rule so do not fear uh, stable coins have a future but we have to adapt to have better algorithms and better backing from the founders and the foundation before they actually can be launched that's a very long subject maybe at a separate i will talk about it anushka but yes uh, they are fine just like many other project but terra was a good project unfortunately there was a lot of things which went wrong and uh, that i don't wish to blame anybody or say anything but bottom line is yeah sometimes things go wrong as one case good good questions guys good questions what what uh, what else So guys, uh, you know, if you have no further questions, uh, you know, I think Raj sir had some other meetings, but you can write into Saurav or to me, and you can ask us whatever you require. Uh, Raj sir is very very close to IFOC. He's also an executive committee member of the of of the company. So if you need any information, any any more uh, uh, information from Raj sir on India Blockchain Alliance or uh, on his. Um, sorry, is Ethereum used for smart contracts? Okay, so she's yes. it is used for smart contract you can use others also but ethereum is the more popular one right now okay. solano is there also now which you can so great you guys might want to ask something related to the problem statement if you want help in you know getting the problem statement submitting an idea because yeah. i expect all of you guys will be submitting ideas also uh, now that you yes. register for the program there, so there are many aspects in you know where we can use blockchain for good i given you one or two examples how it can impact the environment how it's helping the edu uneducated children becoming educated there are so many more if you'd like to have, share if you want to ask me some idea idea statements i'm happy to give i'm working on 12 projects which are which come under this bucket called blockchain for good 
So happy to help you anytime. You can always uh, speak with me anytime. You can reach out to Deacon and Saurabh. We can always get on a call whenever. Absolutely, absolutely. Deacon is one of the few guys who's got my calendar. That's why. My <laughs> privilege, sir. <laughs> no, no, my Great. Yes. Great. Thank you so much, everybody, for being on this uh, webinar today. Thank you, Raj, sir. It was actually a very interactive and uh, fun session. It's about probably the only session where I was, you know, watching. Tuesday, I go do something else and come back because blockchain is still new to me. But yeah, I wanted to be part of this. So great. Thank great. you so much. Uh, and thank you so much, everybody. Have a good evening. Bye, and, folks. Um, Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Thank you, folks. Bye-bye. Thank you, Saurabh. Thank you, Deacon. Thank, thank you, you all who attended. Cheers. And we request all participants to start submitting their ideas as early as possible. So we are going to come with some uh, rewards to those who submit more and more ideas. If you like, if you are submitting all, all ideas for all 10 problem statements, we'll be getting some rewards. I request you to submit more and more ideas, get your friends involved in this because lots of things are coming where you will be learning a lot. This hackathon is just not for the competition. This is, uh, we want to build a world's largest, like in India's largest and world's largest student ecosystem for blockchain. So we request you to be stay tuned, like solve the problem statements, get in the ecosystem. If you need anything, do contact directly on the WhatsApp. We have a WhatsApp group created for all students. So you can ask directly the questions there, or you have my email ID and anything else email ID. Just directly um, contact us. Can you share? The link? Yeah, sure. I will share. Just be there. Be here for right now. Okay. Here is the link that where you can go and register yourself. You will, be, you will find a brochure where brochure includes all the problem statements. Even on the website, the problem statements are listed. Even if you, uh, even we have given the FAQ where you will find the procedure of how to register. Or if you don't understand directly, just you'll find the email contact us link on the website you can directly contact i'll put my email id here you can just contact me on my email id okay yeah thank you